Hey, how's it going? Jeff here from Deep Cycle Battery San Diego. Today, Vatter sent me a battery to test and install. And what I'm going to do is unbox it and show you if you decide to order it. What you'll get is this nice package box with protection. You got the 51.2 volt, 105 amp hour steel case lithium iron phosphate battery. Comes with a registration warranty card. Very important you do that. Uh, some instructions on the on the app that they give you so you can monitor the state of charge which is pretty cool I do like the Bluetooth Bluetooth feature the batteries have so you can always see that on your phone let's see what else they give us here I'm guessing they're gonna give us a state of charge meter so you don't always have to use the app yep there's the state of charge telemetry cable and then this will be the state of charge meter that you'll get Perfect. Let's see what the display looks like. Sometimes these things are small and round. Sometimes they're a little bit different. And let's take a look here. If I can get it open here. There you go. Oh, that's really nice. That is really cool. Got the telemetry cable plug-in port. It's got this really nice mount here so that we don't have to cut into the dash necessarily we can mount it somewhere all carts are different where you can purchase this on the cart so that's really cool actually kind of dig that and then I'm guessing the other box in here is going to be the charger and I think it's going to be a 20 amp charger which is really cool yeah that's going to be our charger let's read it here Yep, to 20 amp, 58.4 volt, 20 amp charger. Really cool. This is gonna be really nice. I like the high output. It means you charge the battery quicker. There's the AC plug for the charger. And yep, nice charger, cooling fan. It's got this real proprietary cable to plug in for the AC. And then this is a real typical DC output with the quick disconnect. You've got your uh, blue and black cable for polarity. And I'm sure it'll tell us in the manual which one will be hooked to the positive and which will be hooked to the negative. And I'll show you that as we install the battery next. Okay, so what we're going to do is put this battery in this 48 volt four seater uh, gem car. And I'm going to show you the back here where the batteries are located. You can see that it's right now using four 12 volt lead acid sealed AGM batteries. So we're going to go ahead and pull these out. And it should leave us a nice platform to install the Vater battery. And here we go. So we've got the old lead acid batteries out. And it leaves us a really nice tray for the, the battery to drop in there. They did provide M8 volts that we uh, have already sent some holes down here to, for the feet. What I had to supply was some nylock nuts so we could capture this on this aluminum tray. Again, this is a Gemcar 48 volt and the batteries are located in the trunk. And you can see my positive cable from the Gemcar just is barely gonna make it to the terminal. So that'll be fine, we can make that work. It's gonna be close, but we'll make it work. Before we move any further, uh, I do recommend you always read the manual. I know most of us don't want to, but one thing they did say after I read it was really important before you complete all the installation, or before you even start the installation, they, which is a good idea, they want you to install the SOC meter, power the battery on, and make sure that you don't have any kind of fault or error out of the box which is a really good idea because this is gonna take some work. So the SOC meter has this aviation style plug and it locates on the side here and it says RS485. So we're gonna locate the pins that are lined up and it goes in just like that. There's a power switch on the side of the battery which is always cool. So we're gonna fire up the battery and then you can see that the battery is now green which is telling me that it's got power. The SOC meter has a little display on it. I'm sorry, a power button on the display, so let's fire that up. Use my nail, pounce on that, and you can see that 
This is real average. Usually lithium batteries shift to us about 47 to 50% state of charge. So that means the battery is functional and uh, operational so we can continue with the installation. If I push the power button one more time, it scrolls over, it shows me discharge is on, charge feature is on. I got the normal status, which is what I want to see, no error messages. I can see a max temperature, uh, minimum temperature, and let's move to the next screen. And this should show you, yeah, there's all your, you got 16 cells and it's giving you the voltages of each cell. So that's really cool. Anyway, so we're green light. Let's keep moving forward. I'm gonna power the, I'm gonna power the battery off for the rest of installation so I don't have any live voltage. Pull out my meter and let's keep going. Okay, so now you can see we got the charger, which will be on board with the battery mounted with a couple of self-tapping screws. Now we're gonna, when we hook up the gem cars DC negative and positive, it's important not to forget to put the charger pigtail plug on there at the same time, otherwise you have to redo it. The instructions didn't say anything about polarity on the blue and black. Normally we're used to red and black. Um, after watching a couple of videos, we can tell you that the blue is negative and the brown is positive. So I'm gonna take some red tape and just label this just so anyone that comes after me won't, won't get the polarity. If they ever take it apart, they don't uh, cross circuit the battery. So we're gonna go ahead and do that. Then we're gonna cable up the gem card to it. And then the hardest part, probably this whole installation uh, is gonna run the uh, state of charge meter through underneath the chassis up under the dash. Um, as far as the charger goes, it is an onboard charger. So what I did was I located a hole through the firewall there or whatever that is. And I'm gonna install a no-co GCP that's gonna allow us to plug this into the backside and then an extension cord will come in from the front and they can charge the cart uh, inside the okay, cab. Okay, I just wanna show you the DC leads from the gem car connected. I got the negative with the, this, the charging cable. I got the negative from the gem car, all of them stacked on there. Now, the positive cable, although I thought I could make it, make it fit over to here, it was a little bit too tight for my comfort, so what I put was a, a four post uh, bus bar and the positive cable from the gem car goes here. I used one of the old cables from the lead acid batteries that leaves it and then goes to the terminal of the battery. Uh, you don't have to do this if your cable's long enough. The charging cable for the charger, for the positive, is now on the bus with this. And so now I'm going to start sending the SOC meter up underneath the car, up under the dash. So it's not the best spot for it, but the cable wasn't long enough for me to go to the dash like I wanted. I wanted to go here on the dash, but the cable didn't give it to me. So I have the SOC meter located in between the seats here. Little peel out, punch the gas. Uh, 25 miles per hour and the governor just kicked in. Yeah, so we got the battery installed. It's been running good. That is a four seat cart and it's been going good. Um, some housekeeping. First of all, they're going to send you a warranty card and I probably should have told you at the beginning of the video. Hopefully you watch this before you install it. Please record the serial number. You're going to need that model number of the battery and then you're going to mail in your uh, warranty. For that and um, let's just go over the battery specific uh, specs it is um, a 5.4 kilowatt hour battery of course it's 51 volts it does weigh 102 pounds and the manual does talk about if you go into storage this is probably really important I only say that because I've seen people uh, forget they uh, to charge their lithium battery and it goes into a low voltage disconnect which by the way is 40 volts and the manual is telling you that if you are in storage mode do not store the battery less than 30% SOC and to charge it, they're recommended every three months. Um, I think that if your golf cart has a disconnect switch, like a run toe switch, like the EasyGo does, engage that. And um, if you wanted to, it might not be a bad idea to power off the battery, um, which I think is great. Anyway, um, as far as the 
amount of current you can take out of the battery. It does say it does have a continuous amp draw of current. Uh, let's see here. Discharge current is uh, continuous 200 amps and it does have a 400 amp uh, peak for 35 seconds. So if you're pulling a load up a hill, a lot of people, it will handle that 400 amp for a few seconds, so at least 35 seconds. I like the battery. Uh, the finish of it was really good. The SOC meter uh, gave you a lot of data. That was really cool. Uh, the mount was neat. I didn't have to cut the dash. You, I think it's real DIY friendly. You can mount that anywhere. I guess the takeaway or the one thing would be the cable was too, too short. Uh, we don't always deal with two seat golf carts. This was a four seater and we do a lot of six seaters. So you're going to have a short cable. I hope they maybe watch this and they think about extending the cable or sell us a patch that we can uh, add to that length. Um, again, I think the battery is doing great. The price is really competitive and um, that's my two cents. We'll take it for what it's worth. I hope you enjoyed the video. I had fun making it, and if you have time to like it right now, that helps us with the algorithm. And subscribe, we got more stuff coming out. Take care, have a good day.